Ladies and gentlemen, as I promised, it is about noon in July, which means we're out. We are about halfway through the month of July. And it is a nice warm day. I have been hard at work. This morning we took care of all the aminals, and now I am. Eh, that's going to have to go next door. Uh, don't lose the wood. Oh, God, that's not going to be good. Oh, oh. I've got this last armful of logs to get on here. We have three piles of logs left. Um, after this, and then we'll have to come back here and clear this area. Mm, it's not letting go. There we go. Come on. Uh. Yeah, I got this last log. Of course, the last one has got to be the one that goes. You call that wonkers? There we go. Okay. Hold me now. Hold me now. All right, so. That's on. I need to shove this on a little better too. Now that I'm looking at that. There's some logs coming way off the back. So I got about two more loads worth of logs here. Uh, once we're done with this, I, or a lot, a load and a half. I would predict this is probably about fifteen thousand dollars worth of wood right here. So we'll leave that part here and we'll strap these on. Snap that on right there. And last but not least, come and put this on here. And now we're gonna take our pick our way over to the facility where we're gonna sell these. I think I have to go out the back. This time I'll be more careful. These are the last surviving piles of wood. Once again, I'm predicting about one or two, one or two truckloads. And we'll do them randomly here and there. I try to put a good hour in. I, I worked from about 11 o'clock until noon in real life. Uh, it's... it's um, I'm at work right now, or I'm off work today because it's July 4th. Happy 4th, by the way. Though it's, by the time you see this video, it'll be like the 5th. <laughs> or 6th, something like that. So the mill's over in the bottom right corner. This is where I dumped over last time. Ooh, somebody's, uh, what do they got there that's ready already? What is that? Barley, ready already, crazy. All right, so I will catch you guys when I get back or down to the, the um, plant where we sell this. I just want to make a comment. I was driving past a wheat field yesterday, uh, just down the road from where my wife's horse barn is. The wheat was pretty much fully grown, uh, and there were weeds that had grown up inside of the wheat, and it looked just like the weeds on this game. I was like, oh my gosh, that really is, like they look funny here. Uh, in this field because there's nothing on the field but the weeds but in, when they're mixed in with the crop that's actually really what it looks like and I was kind of shocked I was like you know I never really paid that close attention to it um, and uh, but that it really is you know fairly realistic on how it looks with the weeds I thought that was neat and so we arrive at the facility um, oops well this is the front entrance, which is a little bit harder to... Is it? 
Yeah, this is the front way in. And there's a back way out. Maybe. You just gotta follow the sticks. They made this nice trail of, like, broken sticks for you to follow. Like, oh, that's where we're supposed to go. And then there's the exit. So we just pull in here. And we press L. And I get out, and I'll do this. Ooh, 30,000. I underestimated. There were some nice pieces in there, huh? So that's really good. We're back up to 123. I don't have any more, like, crazy spending things I need to do. Except for, let's check the shop. I always forget to check. Occasionally we run into something good. Oh, that's the wrong shop. Sorry. This guy here. Now, that's not a bad deal there. That McCormick. Uh, but I don't, I don't, not right now. All right, so I'm gonna head on back. I'll see you guys when I get to the farm. All right, so our big chore for today is to mow. Now, we'll get grass again in two months. Uh, right now, I believe we have lots of hay in our suppository or our storage facility. Let's go check. There should be enough for the horses for sure. Since we only have two horses, they really don't eat that much. And we got plenty of silage mixed already. So, yeah, there's 90,000 liters. Um, so we don't really need to, to make more hay right this second. We will. But right now, we, we, need, we do need to make more silage because we have nothing left over. It's all gone into the TMR. So, the first mow of the year is going to make us our TMR. And let's see what we got here for our mower. I think we could run that with the Voltra, don't you? I'd rather use the big tractor for big stuff and the Voltra for like the medium size. Oh, does this one reverse? Does this, have, does this reverse? No. Ah, oh, what a bummer. Not that it matters. We used to be able to put three mowers together on the front and then run a tether on the back. But we're not making hay anyway, so... We're just going to be making... Silange. Look at the happy horses out there. That's what my wife does all day, every day. Oh, so I wanted to talk to you guys. Mike and I had a little discussion on SnowRunner. But this is the more appropriate venue for this. I know that some people are getting real upset because the people that made Straw Harvest have made a firefighting mod for Farm Sim. <laughs> and it is... I do understand a little bit of the angst towards the idea like what the hell this is a this is a simulator not you know uh, a firefighting game I, I get that sentiment I do however I I also feel like one a lot of farmers are volunteer firemen that is that is a big part of the farming community at least in America and secondly, um, I feel like uh, if they want to make it, then let them make it. Why? I don't understand. Oh, crap. It's in the wrong work mode. Uh, I don't understand why everyone's so gall darn upset about people making a mod. If they want to make a mod, let them make whatever mod they want. Who cares? Change work mode. But I do understand why people are upset. 
Um, I think it's because they would prefer that their favorite developers are working on farm-related stuff rather than silly stuff. But I, I think the idea is neat. And, you know, once again, as a farmer, you probably will at some point have to deal with a fire. I mean, I know, you know, farm equipment catches on fire all the time. Bales catch on fire randomly, spontaneously. It happens. So, I don't know. I don't have my control panel hooked up anymore. I had a button set up so that I could just press one button and it would raise and lower the mowers. It's a big help. I don't have it anymore. All right, so let's get this stuff mowed. I really like the fact that this wind rose by itself. That does make life a lot easier. Is it control B? Control V? No, that just lifts the one. Oh, no, it is. Okay, so it's control V on the keyboard to lift both mowers. I knew there was a key that did it. And the good news is this this um, has enough horsepower to do the job, uh, this, this uh, tractor. And so we don't have to use up hours on our big tractor mowing the lawn because that, that tractor is overkill for lawn usage. It's really designed for the, the heavy field work. So that's pretty cool. dogs upstairs making trouble now i'm excited i got to be in a new studio um i'll have to maybe i can sneak a photo in here but it's kind of a mess right now because i just moved in but my uh my daughter evelyn has expressed you know she's 16 now and she's she's gonna start working a job in the town where she lives with her mom which is just a town over but she's like i don't She's like, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll see you every weekend because I see her at Mark's house. She's like, but I don't know that I'm coming over anymore. Like, I'm just going to, I want to live in one place and, you know, made me a little bit sad. But that is part of them growing up. And like, I get that, you know, so she's like, I, I'll, I'll always visit you and stuff. But I do want to stay here. She has a dog now. She's like, I don't, it's hard for me to bring the dog over with all your guys' dogs. And, you know, um, I just want to you know, be here and, and have my dog here. And so it's okay. It is what it is. But I said to her, cause she has a bed. We've had a, a bedroom down here that she hasn't used for like six months. And I'm like, I really need an office where I can one, get away from all the noise two, you know, get somewhere where my stuff isn't getting eaten by the dogs. If I leave it out. Um, and, uh, I, would I, could I use your room for that? And she was like, yeah. So, um, I have now moved my office down the basement into one of these rooms and they are, it's nice because we, we, we had these rooms built about three years ago um, with my inheritance money. We, we did some uh, renovations in the house and that included making two rooms and like a, like a little hallway where the kids could hang out um, down the basement and uh, two bedrooms and a, and a hangout room. And so now we've got these, you know, I've got this hangout room or this bedroom that's not being used. And so it's, it's where I'm at. And I'm real excited because it's really nice because it's all just new stuff. It's got, you know, new paint and all a bunch of outlets. He did. He really did a good job putting outlets like everywhere. So there's electricity everywhere and it's just, it's well suited to be an office. So I'm excited. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get these fields mowed. I will check back with you once I'm done. Once again, these are the parts of the recording that are not necessarily super exciting. Uh, so I'll see you in a few minutes. 
Looking good so far. We got the first field done, and I'm working on the second field. About a quarter of the way done on the second field. Maybe maybe a third. But uh, just got to love this setup. Now, it's funny. I'm watching the Vultra go here, and it's got... Uh, um, it's it's shifting, and I forgot that this one does not have a CVT. It's it's a it's a gear shifter. So watch the speed as I go. This is kind of funny. I'm going. It shifted there 10, 13, 14, and then it stops again. Did you, did you see it do the shift though? Like it went to ten, and then it was like vroom, vroom. it's like my car. I looked at a new farm called Richland, or Ohio Richlands, and it's supposed to look like Richland, Ohio, uh, and it does. I liked it. Uh, it doesn't. It's not really much different from this map. This map, aside from this, Ohio is a little bit hillier than it is on this map, though. Honestly, eastern or western Ohio is not. Um, but <coughs> the side of Ohio that I live on is pretty hilly, and so the road you don't see as far. Um, but it is similar to the layout. Like this, this really does feel like Ohio, except for the pine trees. Um, and the farm is laid out a little different. But anyway, this, I, I'll try to do a tour of Ohio Richland. I don't think I'll do anything on it, but it was interesting to see it. And it was a very small farm, but it did have a very Ohio feel to it. I was like, oh my gosh, this really does feel like, like the road that goes by out front looks like it could be like Route 40. 44 or whatever going into Chesterland, you know, it, it, it's it's got an Ohio feel to it. I thought that was pretty cool So anyway, keep your eyes peeled. I'll I'll try to do a little map review of that um, So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this stuff done and I will um, Get we'll resume the video once I'm finished mowing. We'll go to collect this material and turn it to silage. That's our big chore for today. So I'll be back. All right, and I am just finishing up the mow with our Pottinger cross flow. All right, Pottinger? Yeah, yep. And it is a great little device. It has proved to be quite, quite valuable. And we've got both fields mowed both fields ready to be collected with our ginormous collection wagon and then we'll put this stuff into the silo and get it cooking so that in a couple weeks we'll have silage and that was I mean pretty quick it took, it took me maybe off camera like half an hour at the most. It was real easy mowing. There's our lovely farm over there. <coughs> Clean these mowers up and repair them. I try to keep everything repaired all the time. That way we're not going to worry about it later. And clean, obviously. Once again, that field is looking pretty tempting. Two more loads of $20,000 lumber and we'll have $140,000. That means if I spend 80 on that field, we'll still have 60 left for the summer. Um, so part of me just wants to go ahead and do it. And then with the crop money we get this year, we'll add a sprayer to our arsenal, which we had one earlier, but I ended up being stupid and selling it. There was that big New Holland all in one unit. Let's see what they got in stock. Uh, the store sells a couple different things. We're not gonna get it yet, but we can at least see what they're offering. Um, where's crop protection? There we go. I mean, even that would just work. But these are these are nice, and they're not ridiculously expensive. Wow. 4,000, 4,500, 5,200. <coughs> um, 
this one is hmm what are the differences they're both the same company both the same reach we get a Bertaud. This one doesn't tell us the reach. Huh. Here's Kubota Pack. 40 meter. 40 meters? Wait a minute. What's the biggest one of these? 33 meters? So the Kubota offers the biggest one so far. We got a John Deere sprayer. That seems a little bit more realistic. And this one has a Cavernland. Oh, because the this is a Cavernland. That's right. The Kubota equipment's rebranded. This one's 20. That's kind of a neat one. What do we have in motorized? Um, I'd rather have a motorized one, honestly. That's what we had, but I, like I said, I stupidly sold it. This is what's available right now, and man, they are expensive. Holy cow. Man, I'll have to see what else is out there. Slurry tanks, those are cool. Okay, so we'll see. We'll <coughs> see what we can afford when it's time to do the purchase. I really n not wanting to spend two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on another piece of equipment. So I think the pull behind one's probably a better deal. Let's see, repair fifteen dollars. There we go. So four hundred dollars of repairs, and let's go ahead and get. The mower's put away. Have a self propelled mixer wagon, too, wouldn't it? <coughs> well, we got many years to go. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, yeah, that works. And let's go grab the collection wagon and see where it is. I don't know exactly where it is in the barn. Over the other side. We can get through there, though. I finally got the baby to sleep. It's 4th of July, and people, it's like broad daylight. People are setting fireworks off, and I'm just like, they're going to end up waking her up. She fought a nap for like two hours. I, I tried to get her to go to sleep because I was up there, and she'd fuss and be like, shh, go to sleep. And she's like, eh, 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 eh. and so she finally went to sleep. I finally gave up. I grabbed my phone. I popped a video on for a second to kind of wake myself up. I was going to watch a video and then get her because she slept next to me. I was, just take, I was taking a nap. And uh, I'm like, all right, Guy, let's go down. And I looked over and she's sound asleep. I'm like, oh, well. There is that. And so she went to sleep, and we're just going to leave it like that. And I was like, now's the perfect time for me to come finish my episode. <coughs> or at least get more of it done. So anyway, we're going to have to, that oat field, we're going to have to, if we're going to buy it, I'm going to grab all this stuff first and then go back. Uh, we are probably we probably should buy it tomorrow, like our next month, June, July, and not let it because I think by August it'll be ready to harvest, and then he'll harvest it, and then we won't get it. So we need to make sure that we get it before it goes to the harvest stage, um, which is a little bit cheaty that we can do that. But In fact, I might even buy it today because I feel comfortable that we will have a, an additional thirty to forty thousand dollars of wood at least, um, plus the twenty-two that's already there. So, 
<coughs> the, if I buy the field right now, I'll be left with 40. I'll pull another 30 or 40 in. We'll have about 60 to make it to crop sale in the middle of the winter, which should be fine. Um, the only thing I can foresee being a problem is we may need to let to rent that. Uh... All right, so we're going to go ahead. I will finish up the collection here, and I will come back. Oops, this one's full. Well, let's put. Let's do our first dump together. <laughs> you and me, and me and you, together we can dump the grass. It's what we do. So happy together. Keep pulling, keep pulling. Crap, out the big lump at the end. Dang it. Oh well. It happens. We need a bulldozer to push that out. I'll have to use the, uh, I can use the telehandler to pick it up and dump it further in. Oops. Since I got stuck on the wall. Oh well. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and get this done. I'll see you guys in a little bit. time I just realized I gotta this is getting too unruly and already I'm having difficulty driving through it so I'm gonna move this out of the way I'm gonna compact what we have so far um, so there's still a bunch more to collect and so I'm gonna use the uh, big tractor for compaction I should probably get some kind of silo weight compactors but this thing's pretty heavy, especially with the tracks. And then whatever's left, I'll have to push back in again because this is going to shove some stuff out. But we got to drive back and forth over this until it compacts. <laughs> uh, Alright, I'll be doing this for a little while. Have fun. All right, I am trying to get this final load of chaff on the mound here, and it's going to just go all on that end. Dang it. <laughs> this is really difficult to navigate once it starts getting full like this. Uh, so we're done with the pottinger wagon. We have some cleanup to do. We'll do that with the case and then also with our uh, telehandler. We can clean this wagon up and put it away. This is, this is a uh, a good example of um, large farm cleanup. <laughs> hey, I made it. I thought I, was, I thought I was hitting the weeder, but I'm not. That weeder's probably going to go up for sale since I'm going to go back to the sprayer. Okay, it's getting late. I gotta go to bed soon. Let me try to get this edited and available for you guys. Um, so we're done with this tractor for a little bit. And I need to climb on this thing here.
All right, so we're gonna we're gonna flatten this out. Um, oh, getting stuck. So we've smushed it all down. Let's take a look at our percentage. Ninety-six percent compact. Which I don't know. It's I'm trying to think if it's worth the ends. We got a lot of silage coming out the end. But then I have to recompact it, and then it'll come back out the end, and then I gotta recompact it again. And I don't really wanna get into that. That's definitely our, our uh, compaction is our job here today. And we are doing a good job at 99% compaction. We need just a little compassion. Compaction, yeah, yeah. I think we need to buy this field. So, number five is alive. $84,000. And that leaves us with 38000 but we got more coming. Oh, always check the sale of the day. What's on sale? Nothing we need. Okay. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. I will see you in July. Uh, anyway, love you guys. Have a great night. Be sure to subscribe, thumbs up, voice up, and we'll see you next time on Spruce Mountain.